Wake up! I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel and today on coffee review number eight we are looking at grocery store coffees. This is a little departure from what we've been doing by going through a region or a continent's single source coffees that I have access to and roast myself and not everyone can do that. Maybe you don't want to do online ordering from those roasters that supply them roasted and deliver them right to your house. So I'm going into the grocery store and looking for the best coffees I can find and or things that I've had in the past and liked and enjoyed and we're going to go through a few of these. And the extra topic today is flavors or additions to coffee that the roaster does, the vendor supplies that the vendor puts in. And that's also a grocery store thing. But before we get started, let me remind you to like this video down below, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, leave a question subscribe to the channel and click on that bell to get notified when the new videos come out on Mondays. So I'm going to do four grocery store coffees here and these two are uh, things I've liked in the past. So I remember seeing Dunkin Donuts and I tried it and tasted it and you know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago and I liked the grocery store stuff and you can get a whole beans and grind them yourself and keep them a little fresher that way and also remember seeking out Pike Place all the time. Pike Place medium roast it says from Starbucks which I thought was a little milder less burnt version of some of the things they offer and my wife and I would drink this and uh, so these are both these two are both things I've enjoyed in the past. So I got the Dunkin Donuts right here. I made the Starbucks a little earlier and poured it into this travel mug so we're gonna start in. So the Dunkin Donuts is a milder flavor, but I remember it being different than most coffees that I could get back then, whole bean or otherwise. And I just thought it was a special thing that you could go into a grocery store and buy whole bean stuff that was a little different than all the coffee companies kinds. So I, I would even buy a ground at Sam's that came in a bag that was way too big, pound and a half or something I couldn't use up in <laughs> very fast. So I made this the same way I've been making all my single source roast at home type things. So this is in my automatic coffee maker with filtered water. I rinse the filter, the paper filter out and then use my 16 to 1 ratio. So 40 grams of coffee I ground up myself from the beans and 640 grams of water went into this. And it just got done a few minutes ago and it's piping hot. So I'm letting it cool off a little bit here in this small cup, which won't take long. But on the nose, I don't really get much identifiable. Fruit, vague fruit, mushy fruit, mushy in identity. Hmm, don't really know what to say about that. I'll, I'll taste it. Oh, it's lighter. It's uh, hmm. definitely not offensive. Maybe that's what I was looking for back then. Mm, it's got that a bit of that Central American vague fruit. <laughs> Plum only much less than I've been having in my single source beans. Oh, but it's weak. It's more watery. And I made the same ratio. a hint of a cocoa note there's a hint of, or suggestion of chocolate and earthiness but it is vague faint distant so I like it and maybe I had it with cream back then and maybe that made it more interesting so this is an interesting thing where there's a whole cult around donut, Dunkin Donuts coffee or there was 10 years ago 20 years ago 40 years ago And it was good to be able to get it, and I enjoyed it 10, 15 years ago. But I don't think I would drink this today with all the coffee options I have available. It's not very bold, it's not very distinct. It's also not very offensive. It's not gonna, not gonna hurt anybody or give them the wrong idea. 
not coffee necessarily. I'm going to go ahead and do a little cream here. Yeah, I can see how I would have liked that 15 years ago. And it did that same caramely chocolate milk transition. Hmm, it's a little bit of a woodiness there. Maybe vanilla from wood. I'm always finding in whiskeys. Okay, that's interesting. A little bit different. So maybe that's why I liked about it back then. This is not something I'd buy nowadays, but I will I will finish the bag. I'll throw this in my rotation and take it to work. Because I can roast the beans and have it fairly fresh. Did I ever find a date on here? I did find use best if used by March 10th, 2021. I just bought this a couple months ago. So I think they're on a one year date cycle. So I bought it fairly soon after it was roasted, if that's the case, but I don't really have any way of knowing. So I think these were nice fresh beans when I bought them. The very recent roast date, and they say they go out to next March. Oh, I don't know about that. It did have a one-way valve to line out the gas, but uh, that's probably all over in three or four months, and it's not outgassing anymore, and oxygen might be able to diffuse in a little bit. Okay, so that's not as good as I remember. Next on the agenda is Pike Place. You know, I was buying this back at the time when I really couldn't stand Starbucks. I didn't do any of the sweet, milky, frothy drinks with fancy latte art and all that. I just never really got into it. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. Oh, okay. Made it. Ooh, that was close. So, too full. I brewed this one before I brewed this one. So it's been in the travel mug a little bit longer and waiting around for its chance to shine. My late wife and I were looking for lighter roasts in the Starbucks line that we could buy. I bought this at Target recently. They still have it. It's a whole bean thing. It's got a date on it. It took me forever to find the date. Okay, 22 October 2020. So this may have been <laughs> roasted last October of 19, 2019. And they say it's good for a year, is my guess. So it's been six months in the bag before now, or eight months in the, in the bag. Oh, right away, it smells darker, richer, closer to being burnt, or very earthy. I'm getting all those dark smells. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's much darker. They call it a medium roast. And I poured out some of the beans just to show you how dark they are when sometimes they say medium. They, they sure don't look medium. I think I'm tasting lots of Robusta content, which is real common for Starbucks and some of the other coffee providers. And Robusta is generally inferior to most Arabica beans. There's certainly lots of average and below average Arabica beans. Half of them are below average, aren't they? But the Robusta is good for the growers and good for our price. It's not, it's easier to grow, it's not as fussy, more resistant to disease, maybe easier to pick. It's just not as sensitive to many of the things that cause Arabica to have price fluctuations and increases and in issues. So it's certainly dark, earthy, more robusta, which doesn't have all the fruit flavors or nuances or complexity. It doesn't have much flavor until you roast it darker, in my experience, and I don't have a lot, but we'll talk about it. One of my topics is gonna, in the future is gonna be Arabica versus Robusta. And I think there's quite a bit of robusta here. So this particular one is not unpleasant. Uh, I'm liking it now today. It's not my wheelhouse. It's not what I would drink. I am going to finish this bag in my rotation. And I would not have liked it 15, 20 years ago when my wife and I were 
checking this out. So I think we were making it weak back then and probably putting in some cream. Because I'm making the recipe I make now, it's stronger tasting. I, I would have said, oh, this is the burnt Starbucks stuff I'm trying to get away from. So it's got an acceptable flavor for me today, but I wouldn't, I would consider this a failure if some of my beans that I roasted turned out this way. Look at, oh wow, if I know what you have to do to avoid that from happening again. But it is one of the milder Starbucks flavors, apparently. Although I'm arguing with that medium roast designation. That doesn't seem right, because look at the picture. I mean, some of the pictures I found of the dates and the, the what the beans look like. So, with the uh, cream in it. Oh, I just flattened it all out. It's not burnt tasting. It's not dark and earthy. There is a coke on it. That lightened up the whole thing. So that changed the character. So I'm seeing why I liked it back then. I understand now. So it's interesting to taste these guys. And I will use them up, but I won't be buying these again. I can't say whether the uh, distance from roasting date is affecting anything. I don't taste any rancidity, rancidity or staleness in the, in the beans here, but the other flavors are strong, bitter, woody, earthy, things that could cover up some of that. And this one I think was fairly fresh, so I couldn't find any fault with either of these for being roasted when they were roasted. So, I'm going to swap these out and get the next pair. So my second round of grocery store coffees involves two that I haven't really been familiar with before. But I was wandering through Trader Joe's one day and noticed their coffee. And this medium to dark roast claimed on the label here of organic Sumatra. Smooth, earthy notes. 100% Arabica whole bean coffee. So Sumatra produces an awful lot of Robusta, but I think... The, my uh, coffee obsession book says 25% is of the coffee in Sumatra is Arabica. So they could certainly do this. And when you look at it, oh wow, it's dark, oily, smells dark. So that's the first one I'm going to be tasting here. Let's see if I can do this. Pour it out of the big, clumsy, huge travel mug into this tiny little tasting cup gracefully. Not too bad. So that is rich, dark, and aroma. Can't really identify anything real specific. Earthy might be the best description. And on the palate, it's really nice and smooth, but dark, deep, rich, with no one note really sticking out. Earthiness is most likely, it's going to be the most common descriptor. Most people would say earthy. Maybe woody or leather or tobacco, some of those old things we don't eat. It's complex and complicated. And hard to pick apart. But without really any bitter or burnt notes, it's facing the dark, dark burnt direction, but it's, it's not going very far down that road. It's deep and dark and rich. While avoiding lots of things I don't like at that end of the street. So that's really pretty good. Same recipe I always use, about 16 to 1. So this was 30 grams of 3 to 4, 80 grams of water. And well, that's, that's a good ratio, a good strength, a good cup. That's pretty good. I'm going to do a tiny bit of cream with my last little bit here. Did not overdo it this time. Give it a little swirl.
Wow. That stays way on the earthy side with the cream in there. It's a hint of chocolate. It brings out a little milk chocolate type flavor, but it's way over on the earthy end of the scale. So very good. So, I mean, my this can's gone down pretty far. I don't, I don't think it's got... Did I see a date on it? I will, oh, it's on the bottom here. Best Buy 1, 27, 21. So if it's got a one year shelf life, and I bought this a couple months ago, it was only a couple months old. So I'm a, a fan of these guys. I'll be looking at some of their other coffees. They might be pretty interesting. And then we get to our last grocery store coffee here, which I also got a Target on that same trip where I got my, uh, got my Starbucks Pike Place. And I had heard of Pete's. I guess George Howell talked about it. It was already in existence when he started up Coffee Connection in the early 70s in the Boston area. And uh, this is their dark roast. But what I liked about it was all the dates, all the dating is right on the front. You don't have to go around hunting for it. And it's very short shelf life. They have a roasting date on April 10th, 2020. And I bought this sometime in May. So it was only a month old. Or so, and then they give it a three month shelf life. Seven, nine, 2020. Best Buy. So that is a great way to handle your coffee. So I don't really know much about Pete's, but I'm expecting it to be deep and dark and rich and in alignment with the darkness of the beans. They are oily, oily, oily. Smells dark, dark, dark. I don't know how it breaks down in terms of uh, Arabica or Robusta or any of those things. And I haven't really done a lot of research on Pete's. But that's what's in here and I've been enjoying it. I'm surprised by the way I like the darker roast coffees. The things that may have some quite a bit of Robusta in them. On the nose it's really dark earthy might be a sweetness to it but nope that's gone i'm imagining things but this is really hot i need to let it cool off some more so i don't know where pete's is big or popular or if they still have shops around but they certainly have coffee on the shelves and if you go to the right stores Wow, here's a bit of the fruity note that I'm noticing from the Central American ones. It's like a big, more than a hint of the plumminess that I get in the Central American ones. There's a fruity sweetness to it. And then I guess a cloud or a, a background of darker earthy stuff leather and wood and tobacco and all those complex non-edible notes but it's just kind of a swirl or a cloud or a smoke drifting through wow that's interesting very interesting it's deep and dark and rich but not too far in the burnt direction so I would have predicted these would not, I'd not be fans of these and uh, they're pretty good. So these will be in my rotation. I'm going to take some <laughs> dark roast coffee once or twice a week until I get rid of all these things. And I might be shucking out other versions of Pete's and uh, Trader Joe's. Very nice. Yeah, I can try it with cream. Wow. It keeps its deep, dark, rich flavors. That's a little cream in there. It does not go very far in that caramely chocolate milk direction. Even though I got other Central American notes. It, wow, that is good. So I'm surprised by both of these and uh, might investigate a little more. Even though they're not really in my wheelhouse, I can, I can take, take a step or two out in a different direction. 
So these are very good. I like both of these. Maybe I'll look for uh, links to their websites where they just talk about coffee. And next we're going to be coming up on flavored coffees, which is also a grocery store thing, but they're not whole bean. They've been ground. It's a shame. It's a shame. So the topic for today is additions or flavors added by the coffee maker, the roaster, the vendor, the supplier, the factory, whatever it is. So I have three examples here. Oh, they all seem to be from Community, which is a local roaster here in South Central Louisiana. I got them because I thought they'd be the freshest. They're ground. Uh, it's hard for me to buy ground coffee because it goes stale so quickly. Once you divide it, grind it in those small little particles exposed to air, it goes stale quickly. So I think I, I, there was a little bloom on this one. So this was still out gassing CO2. They have one way valves in there so that when they're fresh, the CO2 can come off. But after a couple months, the CO2 is done coming off and some air could go in and get it. But once you buy it and open it and start using it, it goes downhill fast. I see people all the time on YouTube channels, coffee, uh, coffee gurus who just throw away their extra ground coffee. You know, if they have 10 grams extra that they ground but did not need for a certain prep, pff, trash can. It's, they th it's not gonna be good in two hours. It's not gonna be good the next day. They just toss it. So my big sacrifice here was buying ground coffee for this. But what we have here are the added flavors of chicory, which is a weed, a leaf, a bitter herb, a flavor that is popular here in Southern Louisiana uh, added to coffee. I guess I'm guessing it tasted better than the coffee. It didn't make it worse back in the old days and made it better. And then the other flavor is toasted hazelnut. And then I have French vanilla. So we'll tackle these later. Let me get all my different vessels. I had to make two of them ahead of time. And this one just came off the automatic drip brewer. So I've got a little tasting cup in my chicory coffee here. Then I'm gonna pour out. Ooh. Oh yeah, that's chicory. I am not a fan of chicory. I'm not a fan of lots of flavors. Oop. There's all the spilling I thought I would do earlier. I'll put this on so I don't have to smell more than I smell more than necessary. So this is a nice dark looking brew. I'm using the same recipe for the ground that I did for the uh, whole beans. I just did. I just sampled. So on this, there's a green, vegetal, stemmy, woody kind of note that you pick up right away. Not sure I'm getting anything on the nose from the coffee itself, but the chicory is pretty evident. And just from the smell, I would think bitter, but that might just be my memory because it's bitter. You know, I can't say I have any real coffee nuts, so. I don't get a lot of co I can't, there's no notes that I can attribute to the coffee itself. It's not a fruitiness. There's a green, stemmy or leafy vegetal note that's slightly bitter it's just a note it's not really unpleasant it's just slightly unpleasant to my palate so lots of coffee brands down here lots of them add chicory and that's one of their choices so i know there's cdm there's french market there's lots of other things besides community here that add chicory cafe du monde so this is not very coffee flavored. The coffee is fairly weak and it's 
character and the chicory is strong so that's <laughs> I'm done with that one oh, maybe I should try it with cream maybe it wrecks it for cream I'm guessing chicory and cream don't go together let's see if I can spill some more yeah. Mm. Little mixing. Mm, I taste the, I pick up the cream on the nose. It's creamier, it's buttery, it's buttery scotch type notes. Oh, it's not terrible. It kind of dials down the chicory notes, the bitterness, the vegetal nature goes down a notch or two. So they're not clashing. And if you don't like the chicory, it helps. I, I need to remember that. I might be in social situations in the future where I need to know that. Okay, good to know. Next one here is toasted hazelnuts. Hazelnuts, one of my favorite coffee flavors. Uh, Southern pecan, it's okay. I don't do a lot of fruits. I don't, not a big fan of almond flavors, but uh, pecan and hazelnut are, are pretty good over, you know, generally. It depends on the company and what flavors, the flavorings they're choosing. Oh yeah, that smells good. Maybe a tad strong. See how much I can spill here. Ooh, that was good. Good pour. And I smell hazelnut for sure. Do they mix it with anything? I don't I don't know. It does smell toasty. It does smell it's definitely hazelnut. But I think there's a little something else added to it. But I can't, I don't know what to call it. It is nutty. Yeah, I'd say toasty too. And it's definitely hazelnut. There's a nutty character. It's very authentic. It's very hazelnut like. And it's probably just a tad stronger than I would do myself. There's nothing subtle about it. It's it's loud. It's in your face. It's the main note. I'm trying to pick out coffee notes and I'm not sure I am. So when someone else is putting it in the coffee, you, you, you lose all your choices. All your options disappear. So I would drink this one. And it's probably even better with cream. But there, I'm not picking up a lot of coffee notes behind it. There might be some of that Central American fruitiness. So it didn't appear to be a real dark roast. It doesn't smell or taste like a dark roast. But it's, it's probably hard to tell. It's fairly dark liquid. But the coffee part is has disappeared and it's just taken over by hazelnut. Which is a, and as hazelnut flavorings go, it's a good one. Very realistic, very nut-like. Maybe some sweetness when with it. So, not bad at all. I would drink that. One day a month, maybe. <laughs> and maybe I'll have to. Maybe I will have to pick up the pace here and finish this one off. This, I don't think I'm going to be making. With the cream, oh. I kind of diluted it down quite a bit. I didn't put that much in. So there's less of the hazelnut, which is what I was asking for, but there's no, the coffee notes haven't really appeared. So it's not like a coffee with hazelnut added to it. It's like a hazelnut drink now with fat in it. Whereas before it was fat free, it's not very coffee-like. 
little desserty is about all you could call it. So, and I like it better without the cream. Okay, let's cap that up. I guess I'll probably make the rest of that bag and drink it over the next couple months. And the freshest of the coffees here that was just made is this French vanilla. Which is an easy thing to pour because it's in the carafe. Ooh. There's a strong vanilla note. And there's other things in there like some sort of spice, like a, a nutmeg or an allspice or a, some kind of baking spices. So the vanilla is pretty strong on this and it's not hard to detect some sort of extra flavoring, some sort of spicy, not hot spicy, but uh, baking spices. There is something besides vanilla. It's very likely nutmeg, allspice, clove, that sort of family. So I don't know what makes French vanilla different than vanilla, vanilla, or in the coffee world. I think the origination in the food world came from uh, ice cream or an ice cream base. Was uh, if it had eggs and more custardy type recipe rather than just dairy and sugar. They might, I think they call it French vanilla ice cream if it had eggs in the recipe. And then that might carry along. Nutmeg would be a good thing for a custard. So maybe it was in there and maybe they're carrying all those things into the French vanilla flavoring for coffee. So it's a very strong flavor. It's not subtle at all. It's not, <laughs> it's even stronger than the hazelnut. So it's very loud. I'm not picking up any coffee nuts. And they might use a milder blend or a milder roast or milder flavor. So it doesn't get in the way of the flavors that people think they're buying. So but I am not a fan of these particular flavored coffees. I am not going to be finishing this bag. I just don't like vanilla that much. I mean, vanilla is great, but not this one. This one I'll finish, this one I won't, so one of these, three. I can probably stomach, but this one is strong. The vanilla is strong, the spicy layer behind it is strong. And I'm, I wish that was not there. So that's very often the case with flavored coffees is the ones added by the maker are, are not subtle. They're strong and intense. At some future point, I'm probably going to have another kind of grocery store or coffee shop, uh, specialty shop type review where I'm doing some beans that have a roast date. Like I think you can go through Whole Foods and pick up beans that have been recently roasted. And lots of coffee shops are like that. So coffee roasters and coffee, those kind of coffee shops. Uh, and that topic, the topic there might be additions to uh, coffee that we put in, like cream is one, sugar is one, phony cream is one, hazelnut flavoring is that we control the amount of instead of this stuff. Uh, whiskey, rum, scotch. All sorts of things. So I can foresee that being a future episode. After a few more countries. So there's going to be four in South America, four in Africa. And then we'll be moving to the Indian Ocean area. So that's what's coming up in the future. So be sure and like the video. Be sure and leave a comment or question. And subscribe to the channel. And click the bell to get notified. And uh, stay awake and come and join us for the next one.